Hi, I'm Sherry Minnelli, and I'm here with Ron Minnelli of RJM Music and also with Josh Chapman of Fender. And today we're going to talk about how to expand your looper. We worked with Fender on the switchboard, and Josh was an important part of that. And so he's going to refresh our memory a little bit on what the switchboard is and talk about how to expand it. Yeah, so the switchboard is a, a project that we worked on for a couple of years together, Fender and RJM, a lot of development from both of our sides on it. And it was a really great project because what we we're really focusing on doing was taking a loop switcher, the ability to you know fully control your pedal board at a pro level, but trying to make sure that it was easy to start using. You know, for people who are just starting to get into the concept of having presets on your pedal board or controlling your pedals with a different box, but still making sure that we had all those pro features. But one of the things that I know you guys have heard, I've heard a lot as far as feedback on it, is when people are looking at the switchboard, they say, hey, that only has five loops. And you know, I've got eight pedals on my pedal board, or I wanna be able to control more pedals. And so when we were talking about it and you know, kind of my board setup. It came, it came with the idea of, hey, why don't we get together and kind of talk about some strategies or some ways that you could expand out from the number of loops that you currently have on your switcher to control even more pedals and even more effects. So Josh, how many pedals do you have on your switchboard right now? <laughs> so currently my switchboard is able to control 10 effects pedals, completely rearrange them as well as turn them on and off with different presets. And how would you do that, you might ask. The actual way that I'm able to do that is by utilizing the Meg X or Mini Effects Gizmo X from you guys, from RJM. And so that's really one thing that to keep in mind, while you've got a physical number of loops within your loop switcher, um, once you enter the world of MIDI and MIDI control, um, you really open up the ability to control a lot more than just what's on that unit. Um, those five loops, that's a great place to start. Um, that'll cover a lot of ground. Um, but if you are really into pedals and want to go kind of deep, like uh, maybe me or other players, um, it's great to expand and great to look at options of how you can expand. Um, so currently I am controlling a total of 10 effects pedals, um, fully programmable um, as far as where they're sitting in the mix, as well as a few of them that are MIDI controlled that have presets as well. Um, and I think it'd be a great idea to kind of walk through the different levels of how you could control more pedals. Getting all the way up to 10 or more is, is kind of diving in deep, but there are some steps even before that where you can just add one or two more pedals to a loop switcher. You know, the, the switchboard it works for, any of your PVC systems, really any loop switcher in general. So let's talk about it. I see that you, you sent us uh, five PDFs here from the easiest into something that's a little bit more intricate depending on what you want to do. So let's talk about PDF number one here. So as we're looking at this, this is really the most basic kind of setup of the switchboard. And this is really its initial intended use, looking at getting five of your core effects. You could technically fit more in. If you wanted to, they would just be within one of those loops. Um, so that would mean that if you had two pedals in loop one, if you trigger that on, they'd both come on. You couldn't really turn them on and off individually. But just for simplicity's sake, the diagram we're looking at, there's just one pedal per each of those loops. And when you're looking at this setup, it's pretty straightforward. This would be right out of the box. You can do this with your switchboard. You plug your guitar in. From your switchboard, you go to the output. Um, switchboard also has built-in buffers, um, built-in tuner. If you want more info on that, check out our uh, product page and product videos on it. Really phenomenal. But a lot built in, as well as the volume pedal. You'll see that on the far left over there. And that's actually just an expression pedal plugged in, um, which is a really cool feature we worked on with Ron as we we're working on designing this. But this kind of is just the start as you're looking at the switchboard, the basic setup that you'd be able to do with it. But it, let's say that you wanted to add another pedal kind of the easiest way possible that was still controlled by the switchboard. And to do that, we'd be looking at PDF number two. And as you can see here, we've added a black seg segment at the bottom that says the word MIDI. The way that you're gonna be able to control more than just what you've got here is gonna be by utilizing MIDI. To break down MIDI real basically, you know, it's, it's a topic of wide debate. There's a lot of information you could find all over, but kind of to break it down to its most simple terms, MIDI is the electronic message communication system of music gear. In order for a pedal or any kind of product to understand MIDI, it first has to have a computer inside of it. So even analog controlled effects, such as your guys' overture or the full English, uh, which are fully analog signal path, in order for those to understand a MIDI signal or MIDI command, they have to have a computer inside of them. And in the case of an analog controlled by MIDI, 
that computer is basically turning those knobs for you on the inside. Whereas when you're looking at digital effects, it's able to actually work with the dig digital signal processing. But all that to say, in its most basic term, you can kind of think of MIDI as a message from one effect unit to another effect unit. And when we're looking at a loop switcher here, our switchboard will always be the messenger uh, and it's sending out messages to the other effects or other junction boxes to kind of talk to them and say what they should be doing. The kind of easiest way, if you just wanted to add one more pedal that you were able to control in a preset, uh, maybe it's a delay that you only need on always at the end of your chain, um, you could place it physically after your loop switcher. So here you could see that's Z and any effects that you'd place after. And the important call out is, you won't be able to rearrange it with the switchboard. It'll always be there, but there are some effects like a delay or a reverb that kind of always sit at the back of the mix. By placing an effects pedal that's MIDI controlled outside of the switchboard, or any switcher really, you can still control it with that MIDI signal. So by doing that, you'd be able to send a MIDI signal when you enter a preset, pretty easy to program, and it would send out, hey, turn on or turn off to that delay pedal. And that gives you the ability to functionally add one, two, three, up to 16 more pedals this way that you could control with your switchboard. The key call out here is every one of these pedals, if you're going to add them in this way, must be MIDI capable. So it must have that computer inside of it to be able to connect to a MIDI device. And then you also won't be able to rearrange those pedals. They'll kind of always be static where they are in that signal chain. Um, anything to add, Ron? As long as you've connected them with the proper MIDI connections, the messages, on the switchboard and when you switch presets it will send those appropriate messages to the pedals the pedals will do what you want them to do this all happens instantaneously and so when you switch presets you know all the pedals that are directly connected to the switcher as well as all the midi connected ones are all just going to switch at once and so you can have dramatic changes from one sound to another and the, the bonus with the midi capable pedals is that they can also change how they sound as well. You may have different delay presets or different overdrive presets. The, sw the switchboard can be the, the brain that actually tells all those pedals what to do. A lot of times when people are thinking of a MIDI pedal, that's, you know, first and foremost, that's what we're thinking about is like, hey, I could have my overdrive in one MIDI preset, it's a boost. In one preset, it's a gain. And when I'm thinking a MIDI pedal, that's a lot of times what you're thinking is the ability to just be able to recall your favorite tones that you've saved. But what gets overlooked is the ability to also bypass your pedals. Um, in this instance, if you wanted your drive to come on for a second for one preset, but you wanted to come off um, by having it controlled MIDI, even though it's not inside of a switch board, it still can be controlled, toggled on and off. Definitely. And the nice thing is this is a hybrid approach where you can have all these MIDI capable pedals and control them. But because the switchboard also has the loops, you can control completely quote unquote ordinary pedals, normal analog pedals as well, but just by switching them in and out of the signal path. So you've got uh, the best of both worlds. So this PDF number two, you don't need a mini effect gizmo or anything else. This is just what you can do with your Fender switchboard. And let's go to this PDF number three. Yeah, so let's say just adding one more pedal isn't good enough for you or you know three individually or an even more common situation what if you want to add another pedal uh, that's not midi controlled so it doesn't have that computer inside it. it's more of a traditional analog pedal or traditional di digital pedal that just doesn't have that midi capability and the answer to that comes in the form of a phenomenal box that you guys have designed called the meg x or mini effects gizmo x ron maybe you want to kind of talk about the design of what this beautiful masterpiece is a little bit uh, the, the mini effect gizmo is is a loop switcher like the switchboard and like our, our masterminds. Um, however, it, it's not designed to be on the floor. It's designed to be an extension of another switcher. So it has all the capabilities of, you know, a, a mastermind or a switchboard as far as uh, being able to turn pedals on and off and, and rearrange the order. But it's just in its own box. It doesn't have foot switches, and you basically control it from something like a switchboard, and then use it as a as an extension of it. One of the great things I think you did with the design of this is you made it so sleek uh, and small. And if you actually look on my pedal board, I'm using this unit. That's how I'm able to control all ten of my effects. 
but I was actually able to use it as a riser. So I placed pedals on top of it. So it's sitting on top of my fender pedal board with some additional pedals on top, all just dual locked into place. So phenomenal small size. Some pedal boards you might be able to fit it under even, which is phenomenal. Uh, but if we're talking about connection, so looking at this diagram, again, you got the same guitar input, same amp over there, but this time you'll notice that RJM is placed after the switchboard. You could also place it before, that's kind of personal preference as far as where you would want it in the chain, whether before or after, not particularly important, other than calling out the way that these are plugged in. So you'd have your input of your guitar going to the switchboard from the output jack of the switchboard would be going to the input jack of the uh, mini effects gizmo. And then from the output jack of the mini effects gizmo, you'd be running to the amp. It's important to call out that the way this is set up, um, you wouldn't be able to rearrange anything from the switchboard or the effects gizmo inter interchangeably. So they'll always be kind of in that same order where it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five from the switchboard and then one, two, three, four, five, six, because the mini effects gizmo has six effects loops um, from the mini effects gizmo. But with that being said, you have the ability to completely rearrange one through five in green within their own order, and then one through six in blue within their own order. Um, and as you're looking at this, one of the really cool callouts is the only thing that you need to take the switchboard that you've got right now uh, and plug it in and control the mini effects gizmo is a MIDI cable. There's not really much more you need other than that. You can plug that MIDI cable directly in, and with the user interface that you guys have derived for setting presets, it's extremely easy. I know from personal experience, if you want to program, say, having a preset where you've got some loops on in your switchboard and some loops on in your uh, mini effects gizmo, uh, you simply go to that preset on the switchboard, you go to the MIDI menu, and you would select the channel that you've assigned that mini effects gizmo to. I believe it comes stock one, channel one out of the box, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. <laughs> so if you just plug it in right off the bat, it'd be channel one. I think I left mine there because it's nice and easy. You'd send a MIDI number that you want to send to the uh, PC command to the mini effects gizmo, and then simply just turn on all the effects that you'd want, uh, and then press save and boom, you've updated your preset to include any of those loops that are within the mini effects gizmo. So primarily because there aren't foot switches on the mini effects gizmo, you're going to be recalling presets um, to get to those effects and kind of rearrange them um, within the mini effects gizmo. Um, the foot switches on the switchboard don't directly speak to it. So again, you've got direct control of those five that you've selected for your switchboard. Um, and then once you're going into your presets, now you can start toggling in um, different groups of the mini effects gizmo uh, pedals. Great. And so now going to this next picture for what's different about this one. This is actually how my pedal board is set up when you're looking at this diagram. And what you're seeing is the guitar go into the mini effects gizmo first. And then the biggest kind of change, I mean, it shifted a little bit as you're looking at the picture, but the biggest change that you're going to see is that that number one in blue, meaning the first loop of the mini effects gizmo, actually contains the switchboard. Um, before I kind of dive into any of the connections and what that means, I just want to call out real quick, this is what I've got running on my board. The switchboard does have an amazing tuner built into it, but once you do this setup that you've got here, you can see that depending on how it's set up, there might be effects running before my switchboard. So as a result, it's kind of hard to always trust that I can kick into my tuner because what if my fuzz is on before my switchboard? Now I can't really tune. And so what's great about the Mini Effects Gizmo X is it does also have a tuner out. So you can see I kind of diagram that in here where because the guitar is plugging directly into the Mini Effects Gizmo, it then can also have the tuner out, feed a tuner, and just always be getting clean tone, and then also feed the switchboard. Um, but what you're looking at here is putting the switchboard within a loop of the mini effects gizmo. Um, this, of course, means that you can only have five pedals in the mini effects gizmo because you're using one of those six loops for the switchboard. Uh, but what the benefit that this gives you is the ability to completely rearrange your entire signal path um, however you want in any order. So if you remember when we were looking at the last diagram where you're plugging the output of the switchboard into the input of the mini effects gizmo, you've got that static order always decided where you've, you've got your five for the switchboard and your six for the mini effects gizmo, and there's not really any intermingling. What this gives you the ability to do is completely rearrange all of the effects within the switchboard 
as well as the effects within the mini effects gizmo. So to give an example is, um, let's say that number two in the mini effects gizmo is a fuzz, um, and number five in the switchboard is a delay. This would give you the ability to currently, you've got your delay coming before your fuzz, because if you follow the loops, you've got loop one going up to the switchboard, which then goes into loop five of the switchboard, which would be your delay, and then back to the mini effects gizmo, which then runs to mini effects gizmo loop two, which would be your fuzz. Because the mini effect gizmo can be rearranged, if you select a preset where you've already set to move those loops around in the mini effects gizmo, you can now completely switch it and run your fuzz pedal into your delay pedal and vice versa. So giving you a lot of flexibility, a lot of uh, ability to fine tune what pedals are active in each preset. And this is really fun. This is a lot of time that you'll probably find yourself going in and building presets. One of the tricks that I would say, this looks extremely complicated. This looks very complicated to kind of build a preset. But one of the great things that we've done in working with Ron as far as kind of user interface for the switchboard is when you go into the MIDI menu, so if you wanted to build a new preset, you go to a preset, you go into the MIDI menu in that preset, and then you go to the PC messages, and we actually added an all feature, which will let you send the same PC message to all of your MIDI-enabled channels, all MIDI channels at once. So what I have ended up doing is when I want to set up a preset that's got a certain uh, order of pedals, and some of my pedals are also MIDI-enabled, and I want to call uh, certain presets, I use that feature every time. I just go and do all and it sends the same number to all of them and then I set each pedal the way I like it. So rather than trying to intermingle and remember like, oh, you know, my, my gain tone, I really like it in um, MIDI um, PC1, but I'm going to use that again in a PC7 preset. I'll just do PC7 again and reuse that same sound. The main MIDI controlled gain pedal I'm using is actually the full English, which has 100 presets. So I don't think I'm ever going to get close to fully filling all of those, which is where I've kind of just said, you know what, I'll duplicate memory slots if it makes my life easy. So again, when you're looking at programming, it's really great to just do PC all, it'll send the same message and then you can save that. And um, that way, you know, for each of those presets really quickly, the same number is going to set up everything the way you want it. There, there is one thing that people should keep in mind when doing this is that when you're when you're setting up the the loop reordering, that the, the the green pedals kind of move as a unit in between the blue yep. pedals. The green pedals in the switchboard you can arrange them in any order you like, but then the, the switchboard itself is one of the things that's plugged into the the mini effect gizmo. So you couldn't end up with a an arrangement where you have like a green pedal and then a blue pedal and then a green pedal. You couldn't yeah. interleave them that way. Probably a good way to do this is to have all your drive pedals, for example, in the switchboard, because generally you always want them in the same place in your circuit. And, and then you would basically then choose where that group of green pedals sits in between your, your blue pedals. Hope that makes sense. But that, that's just the one thing with this arrangement that you need to keep in mind is, and, and that will kind of help you decide, decide which pedals go where um, when you're wiring this up. That's a great call out. And in fact, I'll just kind of, you know, speak to the way that I've set mine up is a lot like that mindset. So my switchboard has most of my modulation. So that's kind of how I, I arranged mine where I've got a drive that's pretty much always on. So that would be like loop two. If we're looking at the diagram and the, and the mega X, so loop two would be a fu uh, drive that I've got pretty much always on. Loop three is a fuzz that I just like to have on hand when I need it. It's not as important to step on a foot switch to turn it on. So that's kind of why it lives in there. And then loops four is going to be a compressor and loop five is an EQ and loop six would be my delay. Those are pretty stable where I want them overall. I don't move them all that much, which is part of why they're in the Meg X, because it's really easy to click in with the encoder and rearrange things on the fly in the switchboard. Whereas in the switchboard, I've got my full English, partially because it's a drive pedal, but you can use it as a filter. If you set the EQ differently, you can use it as a boost pedal. So just having that ability to put it anywhere within those chains really quickly, I love. But the rest of what I've got in the switchboard are my modulation pedals. So I've kind of set it up where my switchboard is almost my modulation station, if you will. And then around that is going to be the drives, the compressors, kind of the more stable pedals that don't move as often. So exactly like you called out, Ron, when I'm moving what is essentially loop one in this diagram, I basically be moving my modulation as a unit before or after all of the effects that are within the Meg X. 
Yep, makes sense. Okay, so are we ready to go on to this next one? Now, this is the PDF number five. So this would just be probably too much for a lot of people, but showing what you really could do once you get into MIDI. So again, at first you're like, oh, I only have five loops on my switchboard. But when you're looking at this diagram, this shows the switchboard, it has the five loops, but the moment that you add MIDI, you've got the ability to take control of so much more than that. It's kind of like a modular station where this is the start, this is kind of your brain. And then from there, you can really get the individual building pieces that you would need to build out the tone and the amount of control that you need. And if all you need is you just wish you had one more pedal that your switchboard was controlling, then I'd look at that first diagram and kind of go, okay, I really want a delay pedal that's what I need as well that I don't currently have control by my switchboard. And then I'd look up a delay pedal that takes MIDI control and that would fill that need. If you're looking at a lot of analog pedals that you wish you could also add into your loops or your switchboard, that's where the Meg X really comes in handy as well as the ability to rearrange those also. So you've got that kind of full freedom. And now what we're looking at here in the end is just the realization that beyond having the switchboard and the Meg X, which each have those groups of pedals that they can turn on or loops that they can turn on or rearrange, you can still also put any pedals that you know are gonna stay in the same spot before or after the Meg X to have even more control and even more loops than those you know, 10 or 11 that you could control with the switchboard and the Meg X together. So again, if you've got something like a compressor, I know guys are usually pretty particular about where that lives and almost never move it around. That'd be something that'd be great to have in that A position before your Meg X. And then maybe the only time you turn it off is when your fuzz is on because you wanna just get raw fuzz. But if it's MIDI controlled, you have the ability to just toggle it on and off without even needing to put it in one of the loops of the switchboard. Vice versa, if you've got a reverb that you know is always gonna be at the end of your chain, no matter what, it'll always be there. Uh, but sometimes you just wanna kill it. Again, if you've got a MIDI controlled reverb pedal, it could live there and be controlled by the switchboard when you're changing presets without needing to take any of those loops of either the switchboard or the Meg X. Um, so this is just kind of the, you can do it. I don't know how many of you need to do it, but you've got the ability to, to really build out and control a lot more than just the initial five pedals that you would think right off the bat. And honestly, a lot of guys can probably get there with just the five. Some of us feel like we need more and we go to 10 and you could go even higher than that. There's a lot of options. And you know, that's the nice thing about this kind of gear is that you can, you can mix and match to suit whatever you're trying to accomplish. And so it's all just, all just MIDI and they do all talk to each other. With a little pre-planning and setup, you can pretty much get, get it to do whatever you need it to do. And I want to also say we've got the RJM PBC6X and the PBC10, and you could take this mini effect gizmo and do the same thing, just add more loops by using that. This is really applicable to any of your loop switchers as well that have that MIDI out. This is directly applicable to those as well. So it's not just the switchboard that this kind of logic flows with, but we've gotten that question a lot specific to the switchboard. So we just wanted to kind of come out and show the different uh, ways that you could expand that. Yeah, because people think, oh, it's only got five loops. Oh, maybe that's not enough, but man, I mean, you really can do so much more with it. Well, yeah, if you want to learn more about the switchboard, check it out on Fender.com. We've got plenty of videos out as well. A lot of our partners have made videos kind of walking you through. Again, we wanted to make sure that it's quick and easy to use, but it still has um, a lot of those core pro features uh, that the RJM units have, thanks to, to working with you guys. I've had it on my board for, uh, for a while since it's launched even before then with uh, some of the prototypes, and I don't think I'm uh, ever partnered with, with mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so glad you like it. All right. Well, thank you, Josh, for being here today. I think this will help a lot of people to, to know how they can expand their looper. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Always a pleasure.